It's sick though. It's a good feature. Thank you, dude. Alright, so okay. The name of Hong Kong. So I'm going over the all the stuff that the verifiers will need to check out and what the commentators should hear for. So at the start of the run, you definitely need to make sure that they have FPS. They need to have FPS displayed. And the FPS should never go over 120. They could pause the game to make it go to 60 or 30 FPS, but only in a couple of places. The first village fight, they can switch to 30 FPS when going past the dude at the door, but also just during that section in general. Um, the Delago boss fight, they can switch it to as well, and they can also switch it at the, um, the knight in the Ashley section where she runs past. If they switch it and then they forget to switch back, they can switch back whenever they want, that's fine. Um, for the commentators, we are going over Spicy's run, the 158, the first ever sub 2. Um, there's going to be a bunch of information for um, each individual runner, like their backstory and stuff in a different thing, but this is just like about the run itself. The first like two minutes of the run, basically nothing's happening. Uh, you just run past some enemies and stuff. The first guy down here um, has a really consistent strat where you just run into the wall and just bait him to attack and miss like that. Really simple. Um, and then it's all going to build up to the village and the village is a huge, huge part of contention because the village uh, is very, very reset heavy. You're going to see basically every runner going in here to grab the flash grenade and the ammo. Um, but then after that, you might see a little bit of divergence on the strats here, but probably not. Oh, for the verifiers as well. In the bottom left here, it's hard to see because it's cat cam. Let me move it real fast. But um, there's like an overlay that says like enemy HP and stuff um, and a kill count. You're going to see that on most people's things. Um, that's totally fine. Just no health bars floating over enemies. If there's health bars floating over enemies, that's invalid. Um, not allowed to use that mod, but you are allowed to use the SRT or re framework to check those if there is a da value or like a current pesetas or whatever just check it every once in a while make sure it's not what it's not supposed to be make sure it's correct they're not tampering with it or whatever it probably won't they'd have to pause the game to do so so it'd be really hard to find but just make sure that's true also over here ammo and guns and all that stuff make sure that's not obstructed there's also a checkpoint thing that shows up up here make sure that's not obstructed either you just need to be able to see it that's all um so the of the village, you need to kill 15 enemies to make the section end, and it starts right now. So this first enemy does count. This is the strat you're going to see like 90% of people doing. Uh, stealth kill her, grab some herbs, and then shoot this guy to death. This is like two twofold. It kills the enemy, and it also aggroes everybody because you're shooting a lot. Then you grab this grenade, which is a static drop, and you go through this door, and you open this here. You throw the grenade here, and you're looking for as many kills as possible. At this point, you already have two, but you kind of want like eight or ten here, ideally, like total, after this. Um, but it's completely random. Like, this is one of the more random parts of the game. The grenades do really bad damage. You're going to see that Spice is going to pause buffer the grenade this and, like, switch to 30. This is, like, pure cope. I'm pretty sure it does basically nothing. Lower frame rate makes it so that you can... Um, squeeze past enemies easier, which is fine. You're just not allowed to do it in every place. Like right here, this is fine that Spicy did it there because it's part of the first village section. But you can't be doing it all the time. Then you go upstairs, grab the shotgun, grab the other grenade, and then throw it off this section. You're hoping that there's a bunch of enemies here so that you can ideally get to the 15th kill with this, with the grenade throw. It almost never happens on Pro, though. Um, the idea with pausing, by the way, is that, you know, at lower frame rate, the grenade has higher explosion radius, so... By pausing, you get the higher explosion radius without having to switch frame rate. But I, it's not really confirmed if it actually works or not. You'll see pretty much everyone do it. Um, to get the 15 kills, you'll see runners shotgun the rest. Um, this is where things get really scary. If you don't have like at least 12 kills after that second grenade throw, it is like super monk ass. And on pro, if you die, you can't reload checkpoint. There's no checkpoints, so you have to reload from a save. So you will probably see everyone make pra like safety saves on the way here, but it's really far away. It's still like a one and a half minute walk here and the section is long. So if people die here, they're at like an insane disadvantage. Um, you'll see probably people playing it like Omega safe here in the tournament and live event, because if you fuck this up and you die here, then things go really, really bad. Um, so you're going to want to see 
the runners like go grab the first aid spray there also the extra shock and ammo and all that stuff the first aid spray ideally they're going to sell that because it sells for like five grand same thing with the red green yellow herbs they're not going to use them they're just going to sell them because they sell for 10 grand so when you see runners pick up yellow herbs or red herbs most of the time that's going to be used for um selling so here in this section you normally have to go around this big um windmill thing but instead you can either shoot through the window to break the lock or just clip the gun through the door and break the lock from here you probably see most of the runners that are in the cool in the actual event breaking it through the door um grabbing a few treasures the treasure route's like super super important i don't know the exact details everyone's gonna have a slightly different treasure route but um you're gonna see a lot of treasure picking up and a lot of treasure crafting at the merchants so now he has a red green yellow so he's gonna combine those to be able to sell um, this first section is like pretty consistent. You shouldn't have to worry about anything here. It's basically just walking until the end of the chapter. It's pro, so enemies are really aggressive, and you can only perfect parry, so the timing on the parry is way tighter. Also, there's no auto saves, um, and enemies do way more damage. That means that basically any room, like people can just get grabbed and comboed and like nearly die and stuff, but some of the rooms are gonna be like more consistent than others. Like this section is basically free until the end of the chapter. Um, where you get to chapter two, where all your stuff gets taken away, but you can get it back here in a second. Um, you can sneak past these guys, but on pro you're going to see the people killing them, especially with stealth kills. This is an insta kill, and you don't have to worry about their insane grab range and stuff. Um, you get all your stuff back here, and on standard you'd see selling the regular yellow here, and then buying the sniper and all that stuff. But on pro. Um, they're not going to do that. They're going to wait till later. This section is like one of the most random sections in the game. And you're going to see a different route from basically every single runner in this room. Um, ideally, they get this flash grenade. But as you just saw there, Spicy almost gets annihilated by TNT. There are a bunch of TNT throwers in this room, and they are like completely random. So you can definitely get like 100 HP to instant death from a random TNT on a stupid spot somewhere. So this is like a big spot to look out for. Also, every time I say something's like a big spot to look out for, the runners will most likely save. Because if they die, they have to load a save, and if they haven't saved yet, then they're basically out of the tourney. So you will see lots and lots of safety saves in the run. Here, basically, you just, you just gotta crank the lever, and you wanna use that barrel to stop the enemies from stopping you from cranking the lever. Jumping through here to get the yellow and the first aid spray, because of course they sell for a lot. Um, yeah, enemies can just be in the way. They're like the enemy spawns and placements are like super random. So like that enemy just in the way. You just have to parry or shoot with the shotgun. Pistol doesn't stun consistently. So if there's enemies in the way, they're going to use shotgun shells. Uh, there's a ton of random elements when it comes to item drops and stuff. So every route is going to be different. You're going to have different ammo in different spots every time. Um, there are uh, some static drops like that large resource. Uh, but a lot of them are random too. So there you saw ducking up the stairs. It's basically stair skating. It makes you go faster when you duck up the stairs because he has a little lunging animation. Now we're ending up at Mendez's house. Gonna grab some treasures, solve the puzzle, dodge the grabber, grab the small key. And then we're gonna be heading towards Del Lago. That dude is like always going to have to get shot. He's a huge grabber. See, uh, Spicy grabbing a, a Viper here. We're going to be doing a lot of the merchant's requests so that we can buy gunpowder later. So the merchant has these little side quests that you can do where um, if you do special objectives, then he gives you spinels and then you can use the spinels in a special merchant inventory to buy stuff. Right there, he just desecrated two graves. And that gives um, some spinels from the merchant as well. Um, I don't know exactly if he does the three vipers. You can also eat vipers to um, regain health. So maybe that's why he grabbed it. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but you can also sell three vipers. That gives you the, uh, the merchant thing as well. Also going to be collecting a lot of static gunpowder drops. Because there's a strategy later for the double Garador room where you want four heavy grenades. And you have to craft three of them yourself because there's only one static drop in the game. So getting those extra three, you have to um, get a lot of gunpowder because it's 12 gunpowder per craft. So here you're grabbing some treasures. 
Running past the dogs. Dogs are not free in this game. They're actually super brutal. So that room's really scary. Um, now we're going to go grab the oil so we can fuel the boat and we can fight Delago. This section is actually like pretty scripted at the start at least. So here's Utters, the big guy. Um, he's, the shotgun shell is scripted. He had to go into this house and grab the oil and come back out. Coming back out is like really scary and random. You can see a lot of painful things happening here, getting stuck inside the house. That's why he shoots the barrel. Seems like Spicy gets lucky here, which is good. Um, run past the enemies over here. The section is really not that scary, but like I said before, like any room can go into Eternal Total Nightmare on Pro. Um, now we have Delago. Delago is super different than the original RE4. There's basically no randomness whatsoever, but his waves are higher at lower FPS and you have paper mache spears. So if the spears touch the water, then uh, they will just instantly disappear and you won't be able to hit the fish, even if it would hit the fish if it was like one inch into the water. The fish always flies in the exact same pattern and you'll see runners letting go of the harpoon early so they can throw faster. A little faster harpoon throw tech. You just let go of right click between each throw. Um, also, mouth hits do more damage and when the harpoon is fully charged, it does more damage. Um, you'll always see runners, hopefully always see runners going getting a one cycle here, which means that the fish will die right here at the same time every time. Because um, if he dives, then he actually regenerates his health. So it actually loses an insane amount of time if you let Delago dive. So hopefully we don't see anyone in the tourney doing that. Um, there he just stored his shotgun to make inventory room. Because he is going to be buying the sniper and the scope and collecting the lunker bass. What's up, Kamu? And that is going to take a huge amount of inventory space. So storing the shotgun into the typewriter is what they're doing right there. So a, a huge thing with dying and reloading saves. So when you die in the tournament, you have to hit continue or load a save from that death menu. You cannot go to the main menu because that rolls back the in-game timer. It's the only way the timer rolls back in-game is if you go back to the main menu. You can even load a previous save as long as it's the same save from this run. And that is totally fine and valid for the run. There's the Lunker Bass. Um, and you will see runners doing that in a no reset setting. But just make sure they don't go to the main menu. If they do, it either invalidates the run or it has to be retimed. Um, leaning on invalidating. So that's Baka Soup Island. There's a golden chicken egg there. Um, we collect that and we save it all the way for Salazar because using the golden egg on Salazar makes the boss one cyclable. Um, it does 70% of the boss's total health and stuns it. So it's super, super essential for that boss fight. Um, now Leon is going and collecting um, two heads that are used to get a key to the church. Um, basically pretty straightforward part. I'm going to grab that one first, then come back this way. Guaranteed flash grenade in that box. Grab these, grab some treasures, and then uh, go turn them in. And then they're going to go to the merchant. And this merchant's really important. They're going to be selling the Lunker Bass and getting a bunch of Spinels from the Grave Robber, buying a Elegant Mask, which they're going to combine with three blues. Well, at least this is Spicy's route. Other routes may vary, but something similar to this will occur. And then they're going to do a lot of selling so that... And they're going to sell their, sell their handgun ammo, all of it, because the default case you get gives you a, a bunch of handgun ammo drops. So even if you sell all your handgun ammo here, by the time you're done with the Gigante fight, you'll have like another hundred in your inventory. So it's basically free money. Actually, like collecting as much handgun ammo as possible and then selling it gives you a ton of money here. So they're going to do that. Um, buying the sniper and the scope and then upgrading the sniper to four power, higher capacity and higher rate of fire. Equipping the scope. And uh, that's going to be super useful for the boss fight here. Um, the Gigante boss fight... Kamusami, if I'm wrong, is like pretty scripted. I think it should be like quite consistent as long as you um, do the strat correctly. I mean, he could do some RNG things, but I think this fight is kind of canned. You just snipe him in the face a bunch until his Plagas pops, and then you shoot the Plaga a bunch, and that downs him. Then you shoot the Plaga even more. And then you throw a grenade to stun, and then re-do the same exact thing, basically. Runners here practice this fight a lot. It should be basically the same every time. The la the hard part is like right at the end here, you have to another plaga, one extra plaga shot after he's already up. So 
That is the really hard part. The rest should be pretty scripted, but you have to reload, run away, and then hit the plug while it's on his back while he's running around. That's the only part that I would really expect people to like fuck up or like be really scary. Grabbing a bunch of resources for safety and stuff. Up next, the biggest next thing is the Ashley skip. Um, after you grab Ashley here, you are going to do the first like out of bounds type skip in the game. Uh, when you're aiming the sniper rifle and you're looking down, Leon's hitbox gets pushed backwards into the wall. And when that happens, um, you can interact with other objects and you can do so while being in the wall. So what happens here is when you save Ashley, you can climb this ladder and then aim into the wall and then just start mashing interact. And when you interact, you're interacting while in the wall. And so you do the jump down animation of the ladder and you just fall right through the floor. And so that lets you skip right out of the church and get you away from Ashley. And actually, um, this is really nice because it's faster, but also you don't have Ashley in this section. So it's way more consistent. Ashley will actually teleport to you after you beat the cabin, which is at the end of this chapter. So you do the whole rest of the chapter without Ashley. You'll see every single runner doing this. It's free. It's a really easy trick and um, makes the section way, way better. You won't see uh, Spicy getting the shotgun back until after Cabin. Cabin, there's a lot going on. It's really complicated um, and definitely one of the biggest reset points in the game. You're going to see people saving before Cabin for sure. Um, and if they die in Cabin, even if they saved, it's an insane time loss. Nice grabber. Um, basically, how it works is you have to kill seven enemies in the first phase. This causes a group of enemies to spawn outside the window. Then they're going to kill those enemies with a grenade. So you'll see it here. He's going to line up a collateral there and a collateral there and then shoot the explosive barrel outside that window. And then kill like one or two more and that'll cause a bunch of enemies to spawn here. Throw the grenade and then the wooden planks. So basically the way this works is you kill seven, then the extra group, and then the enemies that die inside of the cabin start having a random chance to drop uh, wooden crate barriers. And once you barricade all three windows, then the first phase of cabin is over. So he's letting enemies inside the room so that he can kill them and hopefully they drop the wood planks. So there he got both. This is a really good cabin. Um, he board up all the windows. Now it's like a timer until the second phase starts. So he's going to go upstairs and collect as much ammo and resources as he can. And then once the second phase starts, it's another kill count. So he wants to kill five. So he killed one, two, three, four, and then he's gonna kill a fifth. And after he kills the fifth, then Utters is gonna spawn in the window. Once Utters is there, you just have to kill Utters and then it ends. With this upgraded uh, sniper, it only takes like four shots to the head. So it's not that bad, but that room can, that was like a really, really clean cabin, spicy, but that can go insanely wrong. Like it's very, very random. Unless you do it like absolutely perfectly, then things can go really, really bad. Utters can instant kill you if he hits you, even at full HP. So, and it's right at the end of cabin. So it's very, very scary. After that, we got another huge section. Um, we're doing some merchant menuing. That uh, lamp that he grabbed, you're going to craft that, at least in Spicy's route. Then he's going to buy an increased uh, case and um, the riot gun and sell the shotgun, I believe. Um, the riot gun's a lot better than the default shotgun because it doesn't have to pump between shots. And it's got insane range of damage. So it's, and the flash recipe, yeah. The flash recipe is going to be huge because they're going to use a lot of flash grenades in this run. He also saves and reloads there. I'm pretty sure that's to fix the enemy spawns for this section because it's on a timer. So like, this section is on a timer. Like right as soon as you enter the room, the enemies start wandering around. So by saving and then reloading, you reset the position of the enemies. And that's why they do that. Um, so you'll probably see a lot of runners doing that. And that's really important because you want to stealth kill this section because this room is insanely cancer without the stealth. If you stealth kill the first two enemies, then the bell doesn't ring and the enemies don't spawn, which lets you get the treasure for free. And you can also just run past the, the end, basically. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see him use a flash as well, but way better than if the alarm got triggered. So there's a treasure in the side room here, depending on the route, people will or won't go for that. This next room is one of the scariest parts in the whole run. Um, it's the Bella Sisters. Now there's two Bella Sisters and the one on the right drops a crank. 
you need the crank to open the door um, so that you can leave the section. But you don't have to actually kill the other one. So what you're going to see is uh, Spicy's going to go break the lock from the other side and get in here. And then he's going to speed run killing the right sister to get the crank and then run out of there. This room is really scary because the Bell Sisters insta-kill you. And it's super RNG. So you see there he shot the right Bell Sister twice and it's staggered. And there's like a hitbox above her. If that happens, you can go up and do the assassination and it will instant kill the sister. Or like it'll get her to the point where you can't kill her right there. And then the crank spawns instantly. But this stun is random. So if she doesn't stun on the second shot, they're going to just start walking backwards and shoot her four times. But if she does, then they'll go for this insta-kill. And the insta-kill makes this room way easier. Because your timing's way better, you're going to beat the regular Granados to the door. You don't have to wait for the crank to spawn. Because if you kill her slowly, then the crank spawns slow too. So you're going to have to dodge the sister and then all, all sorts of chaos breaks loose, but it's completely random. So then you just run away. And Ashley's fine. But you use a flash there and then crank here. If you get hit during this crank, the crank resets. So the, basically you are completely fucked if you get hit here. Hopefully the flash stuns everybody. It gets kind of scary. Then you're running from Mendez. If Ashley gets downed or she gets grabbed and you hit the end cutscene trigger for this section, you instantly lose. So a big part of this is making sure Ashley doesn't get grabbed or downed. Um, because if she does, it's basically over. Like, it's really hard to save her. Then we're doing Mendez. Mendez, normally a boss fight, but he has a complete skip for him. Basically, the way this works is it's going to go really fast because this tr trick is really easy. I'll put it in normal speed. Basically, the way this works is that um, when you are buffering movement inputs and then go into the merchant, the movement inputs will happen when you come out of the merchant, even if there's a wall in the way. So what he's doing is he's like crouching and holding backwards while standing next to the merchant, interacting with the merchant and holding backwards the whole time. So when he comes out of the merchant, he moves backwards into the wall. And then he can re-enter the merchant while he's already in the wall, while holding backwards still, and do it again. And this pushes him all the way out of bounds. It's super, super easy. This is like what you're going to see everyone do, for sure. It's really simple. And Mendez is going to be chilling out of bounds here because the way the game loads the bosses, it loads them out of bounds in the area so it doesn't have to load them in during the cutscene. So now we're at Castle. Obviously, Spicy is a guy in this game. This is the sub two, and he's at 37.30 here. That's like a really, really good time. I think basically anything below 40 would be pretty good, honestly. You're going to see Spicy skipping this merchant. Um, that's because I guess she doesn't give you the bug or butterfly at all in this route, huh? Is that, is that, is that true, chat? Did you use the bug or butterfly at all in this route? It's like completely routed out now, I think. So anyways, this section is one of the scarier parts for sure. The catapults are an insane meme and Ashley loves to get stuck here. But you're going to see some sniping at the beginning to clear some fodder. Blowing up some canisters to break the catapults. And uh, I'm going to kill like almost all the catapults here. You got to fire the cannon into the door to progress. But unlike standard, you can't restart checkpoints or reload stuff here. So things get really crazy on the way out. What Spicy's doing here is you could tell Ashley to wait and follow, but not like OGRE4. It's like fo follow from a far distance and follow from close. And when she's going from following to afar to following close, it's a lot harder for her to get grabbed. So in the sections where you're running past a lot of enemies and you're hoping Ashley doesn't get stuck, then a lot of times they're going to tell her to wait from afar and then follow fast. You buy it when you enter? I mean, Spicy didn't. He didn't even stop with the merchant. So there, she got grabbed, so he used the flash. She turned around. In this next room, we're going to see a, a new skip that we haven't seen yet. Maybe Spicy buys it here. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Spicy buys the Broken Butterfly here. I think you still get the discount, right? Yeah, you do. And the, the free Magnum ammo uh, recipe. Inventory is going to be really huge here. Um, 
it's just a clusterfuck. Like legit, there's not much you can do. You want large resources, but they take up a lot of inventory space. Large resources are used to craft heavy grenades, flash grenades, and sniper ammo. So they're the most important resource by far. Um, along with gunpowder, of course. But yeah, here it seems like Spicy had too much. His inventory is full. He's going to craft a couple flashes here because the next section is brutal. This skip, he's going to grab the treasure here and then flash all the enemies. Then the same principle applies from the um, drop down skip with Ashley in chapter five, except for instead here, instead of dropping down, you're actually interacting with the door from the other side. So what he did there is he dislodged his hitbox in the door and then used really high DPI in his mouse to spin around and interact with the door from the other side. This skips like a huge section where you fight a Gyarador for the first time. And uh, it's actually like not that hard. This is the hardest one in the game. Because this door is really thick. But the other ones are like pretty easy. This one is, is definitely the most difficult. Um, yeah, he gets it first try. You got to open the door for Ashley. She can't teleport through. Um, but she will just run past all the enemies and get to you. You probably didn't even need to flash. With that one, no. I think you can get away with not flashing it, but like, I wouldn't risk it in attorney, that's for sure. Um, once you get into the water hall, he's going to snipe the archers so they don't annihilate him. Then you have to go downstairs, collect a crank, crank up in the stairs, and then crank the stairs for the final section. His biggest concern here is Ashley, honestly. All the enemies in this bottom floor pop plagas when they die. So he doesn't want to try to kill them because those extra plagas can like down Ashley and stuff. And it's not good. So using a flash there, really essential. Yep, there's the plaga. He's aiming for the feet with the shotgun because he doesn't want to accidentally plaga them. But it can still happen sometimes. Ashley gets grabbed here. This is probably going to happen a lot. There's gonna this This room is going to be different every time. You're going to see a ton of improv here. This is one of the scarier parts of the game. Once you get up these stairs, though, it's not bad. Like, if Ashley is with you up at the top, it's, it's fine. But if she is not, then things get really scary. So you lift Ashley up in this section. You got to crank as well as defend Ashley. Ideally, you want to use pistol ammo to kill all these enemies because you want to save the, uh, the sniper rounds. But Ashley is not able to run past any of them. So you got to kill them fast. The enemies in the first section don't follow you up to the second section, which makes the section a lot easier. Um, but it's very scary. The, the worst part about it is that if Ashley gets grabbed while cranking this last one, she drops it and has to restart the whole crank. So if you let the enemies grab Ashley here, the, things get like insanely dicey. Okay, in the next section, you lose Ashley, which makes the run a lot easier, but you get into some hard parts of the run. This is technically optional, but it's a bunch of free heals, so you're gonna see all enemy. Or you're gonna see all the runners like collecting fish here, um, and definitely that treasure. The scratched emerald is gonna give them some money, but also some spinels. Um, this part we have the red zealot. The red zealots are different in this game. They they do uh, they like spawn plagas out of normal enemies. You're gonna see this minute from most of the runners. You shoot them once to start with the sniper rifle. It's so important to note, the bolt action rifle has a critical hit of three times damage if you shoot in the weak spot. So if you shoot the zealot in the face with the bolt action rifle, it does an insane amount of damage. That's, that's like the big upside to the bolt rifle. A lot of people were using Stingray before, but the extra three times damage plus the extra damage from bolt rifle just doing more damage um, makes it so that you don't really need the increased rate of fire of the Stingray. Um, but yeah, that AI manips the... Red Zealot to come over to the barrel, which you then explode and then finish him off with the shotgun. You gotta kill the Red Zealot so you can grab the the uh, little vase thing, or the lamp, I mean, so that you can leave the room. Um, then you do a little puzzle. When Ada shows up, no big deal. Move a thing. This section is really scary, as is the rest of the game. Um, flash past the first room, but there's a couple of skips that you can do here. Normally, you have to go all the way around this section and like pull the levers in a certain order so you can open these gates and stuff but you can actually just shoot that first gate through the corner and the second gate you can throw a grenade through the gate and skip it that way um and doing so in a specific order oh my god yeah you can get annihilated by the the gigante here it's kind of rare but it just happened right there um 
The Gigante's throwing rocks at you while you're doing this whole thing. The, um, what was I saying? The, shit was I saying? I don't know, but. Yeah, it's a scary room. You're gonna see lots of saves, for sure. Nice, piece some boots. I hope it went well. Bach lost a run to the rocks today, so it is it's possible. This section as well, also super scary. Um, you are, you just get Ashley back and you have to do this hedge maze with a bunch of dogs and stuff. The dogs are way, way scary. Um, they can down Ashley and even insta-kill her if they grab her and you don't save her. And the dogs are like actually really tanky, especially if their Plagas comes out, so they want to avoid that at all costs. Grabbing a bunch of treasures. Um, you have to pull up these three uh, flags, which will open the door. This is the fastest order. You'll see like every runner do the flags in the same order here. Um, this is the scariest part. Is that the fixed heavy grenade drop? chat do you know so you need four heavy grenades for the double the door room but one of them is a fixed drop the other three you have to craft and you could also get random drops though so a random heavy grenade drop is huge you don't think that's the one that might be your just random one then i don't actually know where the fixed heavy grenade drop is but yeah he's gonna use a, do a flash or a frag there to kill the dogs that's the scary part that one was random gotcha All right, and then you have to have Ashley hold this for this section so that you can get up here. But once the enemies spawn, then she drops it. So you um, need to re-acquaintance yourself with Ashley. Like, she's technically not following you, so she'll just run to a certain point and then stop. Um, Spicy, what he's going to do here is just run away and throw a flash to this window. This is a sick strat. I didn't know about this. So Ashley will run to a certain point and then stop. And if she's not close enough to you, then she won't follow you. So what you're normally supposed to do is run up to her and then she'll start following you. But what Spicy's doing here, I believe, is letting the Ganado bring Ashley to him to the point where she's technically following and then she'll run. Yeah, so like you see at the bottom right, this is what indicates whether Ashley's with you or not. So that whole last section, she wasn't there at all. So the Ganado brought her close enough so that when he threw the flash, she was free and then she could just run to Leon. And then you don't have to worry about it because the enemies are flashed and Ashley is free and she can push through doors really fast, so. So here we go. Now we have the Chimera section where you gotta go through three different rooms and grab uh, three different heads for the door at the end of the room. This section, you could throw a grenade or a flash to preemptively stop the enemy from dropping the bridge, which is really huge because it makes this room completely free. And then he's going to flash on the way out. Is FPS changing aloud now because Spicy does it in this run? No, he doesn't. I've watched the whole run. He does it in the, he does it in the spots you're allowed to. Delago, the Ashley Knight, and in the village. Unless he does it somewhere later, then... He's fine. Yeah, yeah it's the speedrun.com rules, essentially. Okay, so this Ashley, this night section with Ashley, um, you're gonna see the runners trying to complete the first phase with just the bolt action rifle and not relying on Ashley. Looks like a bolt action rifle and a pistol shot will down them so you can kick and then the kick will always reveal a plaga. Ashley can throw these blue lamps which will down them and then you can kick and reveal a plaga. But you kinda, looks like you don't want that to happen until the final phase. If it just happens, it happens. The final phase, you might see some runners using a flash, but I think optimally you just snipe them all. Because they die in one sniper shot once the Plagas are out. Collecting the Spinel is super, super important here. This one is just a regular puzzle, so it's just walking. And then the Ashley section. The Ashley section is super straightforward. You go to the clock. The clock, you normally have to go to a different section to get the puzzle to get the solution to the puzzle, but you can just go up to the clock and insert the solution. It skips like half the puzzle. The action section is completely free. You should basically never see anyone die here. If they do, we all laugh at them.
Hey, McVic, thanks for the Prime. Um, this right here is the other section where you're allowed to change FPS because the run past this guy is inconsistent at higher frame rates. Um, and then you just run to Leon as Ashley. Then there's going to be a bunch of menuing about the merchant. Um, this merchant is going to get Jewel Thief. This is where he's going to spend a ton of his spinels on um, gunpowder. And that gunpowder is going to be used to create heavy grenades. So he also here buys the heavy grenade crafting recipe. And a bunch of large resources so he can craft as many heavy grenades as he can. And the armor, because the body armor makes it so you take less damage, which is super essential here. So at this point, he's hoping to have like four heavy grenades because you want them for the Garador room. Um, but this is one of the scarier parts of the run because there is no save station after the Novies. So you're going to do a save clip, or you're going to do a, a sniper clip to this door right into the middle of the Novi section. And then um, you're going to do the second half of the Novi section and then right into the Garador room. But there's no save station. So if you die, you go to this whole section again. Um... Novies can drop sapphires, which are really useful for crafting. It's completely random. Novies, like, they either just don't bother you or they absolutely eviscerate you. And it seems like there's really no in between. Um, you'll see runners looking at the ground supposedly reduces aggro from Novies. It does seem to work on the ones that are camouflaged, but the other ones will still smack the shit out of you. Like, right there, you almost always get hit. Yeah, you might even use a flash just to try to not die here. It's especially shitty because right after this is the double Garador room. And the double Garador room is the hardest room if, you're not, if you don't have the heavy grenades. If for some reason, someone fucks up their route or doesn't have enough money to buy the resources or like the gunpowder or whatever. This room is going to be cursed as fuck. It seems like Spicy can only craft three heavy grenades. Okay, he's going to shoot to aggro and then shoot the bell. And this will gather both of the Garadors together. And then he's going to ideally just dump all of these heavy grenades and a regular grenade to kill the Garadors. If they don't die, he's going to snipe them in the back. Um, but the room is way, way better if you have the three, but it's all about the route. If the route's not good enough, then this is going to be super bad. And there's no save station before Novi, so you got to do that whole shit over again. There's also no save station here, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so... Here you're going to see an out of bounds skip. Super simple. Literally all you do is when you're climbing through the hole here, you just turn the camera to the right slightly and Leon will just start walking out of bounds. Then you got to do some precise out of bounds movement to get to where you need to go. But it's actually really easy to accidentally clip back in bounds and have to do the out of bounds again here. With the higher level runners, you probably won't see it happen, but it is possible. Also, you're probably going to see distortion do this part out of bounds too, skipping the kick down the wall while also grabbing the crown. Some runners might do that as well. Spicy didn't here. It doesn't look like he's practiced it. Maybe he just wants the yellow herb. I guess not. Um, so upcoming, we have Verdugo. Verdugo, you're going to see a little bit of a route difference for some people. Verdugo has an insane amount of health, so you're not going to kill him unless you use a rocket launcher. So every single runner is going to, I guess, combine the crown for the 100,000, the biggest treasure in the game, and then buy a rocket launcher and use it on Verdugo because otherwise you have to wait for the elevator to show up, which takes four and a half minutes. So this is definitely, a, you will see everyone do this kind of thing. I think Spicy is a TMP boy. Yeah, so some runners, if they have extra money, will buy the TMP here and sell the pistol. And that is because there is nothing that the pistol is useful for beyond this point that the TMP would not be better for. It's better for stunning enemies. It's better for shooting barrels and explosives and all that stuff. And you never have to reload it, basically. Basically, because it's got already got 30 bullets in it. So you'll see a couple runners do TMP meta here. It's not really a huge deal, but it's an important thing to note. Um, Verdugo is really consistent, really easy. You just rocket launcher him. He has to be frozen. You can miss the rocket, by the way. Make sure that no one you don't jinx anybody and have them miss the rocket. Um, hopefully they save before they go fight Verdugo, just in case they miss the rocket. Um, otherwise, you have to get to this part of the room where you get the elevator cutscene, and then the timer starts. If you don't get to this part of the cutscene, the timer does not start yet. So that doesn't count towards the elevator showing up.
So collecting some treasures in this section, equipping the broken butterfly. Now we arrive at the mine section. Um, there's a couple of different strategies that are going to go here. In standard, you buy a rocket launcher here and you rocket launcher the wall, skipping the whole mine section. But it's twice as expensive in pro to buy a rocket. It's 160,000 versus 80,000. So in pro, you're definitely not going to be able to afford that. Um, what do you just do there? What do you take out of storage? The riot gun? Okay, he stored the riot gun and then brought it back because he needed to make space for the rocket launcher. Makes sense. So you got to do this section normally with Lewis. Um, Basically, you just run past everything, pretty sure. I'm not sure how like inconsistent this part is. It doesn't seem that bad. Run past the chainsaw lady. Stunner. I guess he's going to kill the chainsaw lady. Stun both, or just stun both of the chainsaw people so that... Okay, once you press that lever, this bridge up in the top right comes down on a timer. So he's stalling out the chainsaw people so that when he runs out of the room where he grabs the dynamite, he doesn't die. Because this guy will always grab, and then wow. the section is um, brutal. Thank you. Yo, Lord Talker, thanks for the five bucks, dude. Appreciate that. It does not, the shooting range does not invalidate the challenges. So now we got the double gigante fight. There's a couple different strategies here. I th is Spicy doing the heavy grenade? Okay, so if you're doing a crazy optimal route, which not everyone will probably be doing, it's a lot faster to do two he heavy grenades and a regular grenade and then magnum this gigante, the heavy armor one. He only takes damage to the face, but you need a lot of magnum ammo to do this. The upside to this is that you don't have to wait for Lewis to attach dynamite to his back and do all that stuff. So it makes the fight not RNG. I guess he'll run if I go to the shooting range to do those challenge for the charms, will it disqualify my run? No, it won't. But, uh, yeah, so this makes it not random because Lewis is super random and will get comboed by the Gigantes and take forever to go and blah, blah, blah. But instead, you can use two heavy grenades, one regular grenade, and then a bunch of Magnum ammo to do this. The problem with that is it's hard to do that and have enough Magnum ammo to be able to one-cycle um, Salazar. So not all of the run not every runner will do this probably. But it's a lot faster and it's more consistent because then you can dunk the other Gigante. This is a newer strat. Then the minecart section, complete auto scroller. Just during this section, just talk about someone else's run. Like there's no point. The, the section is free. Like it's the same on every difficulty and it's basically impossible to fail. Um, don't forget to shill the Macharino. Um, Macharino link, there'll be stuff in the description and there'll also be like links to the, uh, there'll be commands in the chat and stuff. Um, and people can contribute um, through PayPal or whatever on the prize pool. All the prize pool money goes to the people running in the events, the actual contestants and stuff. Um, prize pool splits are down here and whatnot. This is a great time to cover it because there's nothing happening during the minecart. Um, after the minecart is Novi's. Novi's are a little bit scary, but I don't think a, really a big run killer. They're gonna stop by the merchant here and uh, repair their repair their knife and upgrade it to max damage because it's gonna make the fight a lot faster. One of the upsides to uh, upgrading in this game is you get almost all of your money back when you sell a gun that was upgraded. Buying the gun, you get like half back, but selling it, um, you get all of the upgrade money, basically. So they can upgrade the knife to max damage here for basically for free to speed up this fight a lot and make it more consistent. And then they just sell the knife and rebuy it after the fight. You get 95% of upgrade money. Yeah, so it's almost all of it. So in this next merchant, they're going to sell the knife, buy it back. And he looks like he upgraded his broken butterfly damage once and bought some large resources all right so now we have the salazar statue section slash the lift definitely a scary part but not a notorious run killer really 
with some practice because it's very scripted. Um, this thing in the middle usually like shoots flames at you, but you can blow it up from the back with the TMP like that. Um, you gotta watch out for grabbers here. The flashes are are useful. You're gonna see some uses from that here. Um, there is a guy at the top who like pulls a lever and that causes those balls to come down. If the ball hits you, you die instantly. So that's scary. Um, you can, I don't know if he's going to do it here. Looks like no, but you can, you might see some runners pulling the lever and then jumping down and grabbing the lift. That, the timing on that is perfect to actually kill the first red zealot with the ball. So you don't have to do it yourself, but it looks like the treasures are more important, at least on pro. Um, the lift stops anytime there is even one enemy on it. So he's, you're going to try, you're going to see runners trying to eliminate the amount of enemies that are on the lift as much as possible. Ideally, no one gets on the lift ever. The enemies are really scripted, so it should be pretty mathed out at this point. Um, there are two red zealots, both of them die in two headshots with the upgraded sniper. Because the extra critical damage. Uh, then this section, these bridges, so there's no save station here. Not until you go around the corner after the bridges. These bridges break if you run too fast on them. So you can run for like a couple of steps and then you have to stop. If the bridge breaks and you fall, you die, you gotta do the whole thing again. So you, like, you, like Spicy's not even risking it, he's just walking. So now we have the Salazar fight, you're gonna see the golden egg strategy here. And they're going to equip the golden egg, and you got to hit Salazar in the body, like in his human body. Otherwise, he won't stun. But if they do it right, they'll start off with a couple of shots and then lead the egg to hit him to do like 70% of his HP and stun him. Then switch to the broken butterfly, and he should, it should finish here. He should die. Um, right there. That's perfect. That's a really good fight. Then we're on island. Um, Island has a cool strat here. You're gonna see some variants from people. These turrets um, normally shoot you when you're inside of the red lasers, but they also shoot enemies and it'll prioritize whatever came first. So what you're gonna see a uh, spicy do is a strat that I think is way better and more consistent than the other strat that most people are doing, where he throws a grenade and it hits the archer in the back and flies the archer into the turret. And that'll cause the turret to shoot him. So you can pass on by. This is really scary because if you die, then the save station is like where the merchant was right at the start of the island. So you have to do this whole section again. What you'll see other runners do is let the cutscene play out where Utter shoots in the air. That causes his clip to be empty when the cutscene ends. And then you can walk up to the laser and stand next to it and hope that he kicks you through the laser. If he tries to kick you through the laser, the turret will shoot him, then he can run past. But this one is honestly way better. I would expect to see more people doing this by the time the live event happens. If not, though, then, you know, it's all good. But I, this one, it seems way better, actually. Um, rest of Island, a lot of just running, running past enemies, shotgunning stuff. At this point, your ammo count's going to be Omega RNG. So some people are going to have no shotgun ammo. Some people are going to have a ton of shotgun ammo. Like, it's, it's going to be all over the place. Yeah, you have to shoot his gun to stun him, otherwise he will just annihilate you. Um, yeah, but that's why you watch the cutscene with the other strat, is so that he shoots it and has to reload. Um, basically, you know, just that's a static grenade drop. There's the fire guy. Here he's going to repair his body armor and his knife, probably. Actually, it looks like he didn't even buy back the knife. I guess that makes sense. This doesn't seem worth it. He has the extra scrap knives. So now we're in the single mother section, the regenerators, driving the minivans, all that stuff. Some puzzles, really simple. Grabbing the key card. You gotta upgrade the key card two times. Pass some regenerators. Um, the regenerators are really scary, but you can parry them to blow off their arms. Um, you gotta switch the power so you can go to the other section into the refrigerator. In the refrigerator, you'll see a strat like this where Spicy's descending his hitbox inside of the keycard thing, and that makes it so that the enemies can't see him or be able to hit him. So that makes the room pretty free. You just sit inside the wall until it's done, and then you can leave. So you don't have to worry about it. And the puzzles are always the same. Um, then for this section, 
you're going to see a little bit of a variance. You're going to do some stealth kills here because this room has a lot of enemies that are really scary. And it's very easy to die here. You got to kill uh, the regenerator with a, with a wrench inside of it. But ideally, you stealth kill those first two guys and clear the whole room. Um, you grab the bioscope so you can tell which regenerator has the wrench in it because it's random. And then ideally, you collateral as many of the plogas inside of it as possible. After you use the wrench to open the thing, a bunch of enemies are going to spawn. Um, and you're waiting on a timer to get this thing to open. Um, but you're going to see Spicy here doing the same thing he did in the previous room where he puts his hitbox inside the wall so they don't hit him. Um, this room's scary because there's a dynamite guy. And the dynamite guy kind of knows where you are, but doesn't know exactly. And so he can like blow you up while you're standing inside of a wall. Also, it's not the most consistent thing ever, so like there's going to be some there's going to be in some improv in the section for sure. Um, yep, leave the section, reunite with Ashley, puts you into chapter 14. Chapter 14 is a bunch of skips. You skip like the whole thing. Door clip right at the start. Ashley's left behind, but she'll teleport to you, so it's not a big deal. And then normally you do the wrecking ball section in the second regenerator room, but you do another door clip um, right to the elevator. You go and press the elevator button because it's on a timer first, and then you go open the door and save Ashley and stuff. Ashley won't teleport to this one, but she will the first one. Then you ride the elevator up and grab the ember, and then you head your way past some enemies. Um, Spicy goes on the bottom floor here because it's faster. The top floor has a heavy grenade guaranteed spawn and a bunch of gunpowder. So you need a heavy grenade to be able to blow up the anti-aircraft gun at the end of the game in chapter 15. If the people runners don't have a heavy grenade at this point, they will go up there and grab that. Just to guarantee that they can still do that. Now we have the Krauser fight upcoming. And there's going to be a massive inventory reroute here. Um, I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff. And sell the Broken Butterfly. And buy the Killer 7 and upgrade its damage and capacity a bunch. And that's to make the fight faster. The Killer 7 is what they're going to main during the Krauser fight. Hopefully they have a bunch of Magnum ammo. I think you craft some here, maybe. Um, two Magnum shots and then a Sniper shot to the head there instantly ends this phase. So that you can just crank without having to worry about them. Um, then you're going to see some really cool movement to avoid Krauser here. Sniper to the face to uh, skip the phase. In this section, there is a save station. So there's no save station in this fight, a lot of people think, but that's not true. Right here, if you turn right behind the door, there is a save station. That's super important because if you choke the crowds in final phase, you have to do the whole fight again. Like the whole section, all the phases, because um, the save station is at the merchant. There's also one here though. So hopefully runners will be making safety saves on this save station. Or they're extremely confident in the Krauser fight. It's like a five or six minute time loss if you die in the final fight. This section, you're going to see some variants of strategies. Hiding behind the barricades is the safest, but you can just crouch underneath the bow shots if you're really confident. The, the downside is the bow completely breaks your armor entirely if it hits you. So you're kind of boned for like future rooms if that happens. Uh, here's a really cool strat. They shoot him down. And then they, he, after he gets stunned when he's on the ground, he's always going to throw a flash and have like a dodge animation. So if you turn around, he'll spawn behind you, and then you can do the dodge into the laser. Krauser will follow you into the laser, explode, and take a bunch of damage. You have iframes during this, so it doesn't matter. And with the one more magnum shot, it ends the phase. You can parry that hit, but it's really hard. A lot of runners just tank it. And then you have the final phase. I'm not an expert on the final phase, but basically from what I've seen is you just magnum the shit out of him. Headshots do extra damage. Um, kicking him does damage and maintains the stun, so you want to do it, but not until the animation's almost over. Yeah, just absolutely wrecked him. Krauser, that he made it look really easy, but that's a super hard fight, and it can go bad in a lot of ways. Better silent one. Enjoy your nap, dude. Okay, chapter 15. This is probably the biggest run killer in the whole game. This chapter is actually cancer um, and is super brutal. Wow. I'm going to craft a lot of flashes here. Thank you. Yeah, Rob, thanks for the 101 biddies, dude. Appreciate it. 
Um, you're gonna see him re-up on body armor for sure. Some large resources to craft more flashes. This first section, Mike helps you blow up at this door, but it's on a kill count. So after Mike kills the first section, then you have to kill a certain amount of enemies, and then he'll blow up the second section. So you want to get up top to use the turret to kill as many enemies as possible, and maybe even use a heavy grenade on the other side to kill those enemies. Um, then you jump down, and Mike will blow up in the door. Once you're around the corner here, uh, Mike blows up this tower, but he does it on a timer, so you can just run forward. The AA gun will stop Mike from helping you, and you need Mike to help you open the next door. So use a heavy grenade and a regular grenade to blow up, and blow up the turn of it right here. If you don't have this, you have to go all the way up the stairs around the corner and grab the machine gun and shoot it from there, which is omega slow and also super risky. So you will see runners avoid this at all costs. Then once you get up these stairs here, after a timer is over, Mike will blow open the door. He's just sending his hitbox into the door so that the enemies can't see him. This is the scariest room in the game. I know I said it like six times, but legit, this is like super cancer. They're going to go up on the right side first and kill the turret guy. The turret guys can, like, new enemies can respawn and get on the turrets after the turret guys die. So that's really, really bad. You don't want that to happen. And the only way to do that really is to flash enemies and to kill the ones that can get on the turret. So you're going to see the right side first, then flash, then run across the other side. And then lots of flash spam and just like praying, basically. This is like very scary. But then if they get it, they run away and now you're going to be seeing a setup for a future skip called Duffel Bag Ashley. That went really, really well, but that's like super scary. So now, yeah, he's going to do Duffel Bag Ashley. So basically the same idea, you put your hitbox inside the wall, but then you flick and grab the save station to save your position out of bounds. Then when he loads the save station, he'll spawn out of bounds and he'll void out. And this is useful because when you void out, the, uh, your animations get fucked up. And as long as you don't die, the animations will stay fucked up. And if your animations are fucked up and you grab Ashley for the walking section, you'll carry her like a duffel bag instead of like a baby and you'll move way faster. It saves like almost a minute. So it's a pretty big time save and it's pretty free to go for. He kind of choked it here because he actually choked the setup because he was nervous because this runs insane. But like, you'll probably see people go for it because there's really no downside. You want to save anyways for safety. If you die, it resets and you can't do it anymore. So if you see someone die, they won't be able to get duffel bag Ashley anymore. These door clips are really easy. You just scope through the door go backwards and then let go of the scope and press forward. Leon pushes it to the other side of the door and then you're fine. This part has a skip. This is one of the least consistent skips in the game. It's very, very cancer. Um, you're gonna see him kill this rocket launcher guy so that after he does the skip, he doesn't die. Um, you're gonna see a couple different strategies here. Spicy's doing the aim into the wall one. So you aim into the wall and hold bottom right and hope the Novi attacks you. The Novi attacks you, the turret will shoot the Novi. Then you can run through, skipping this whole section. But sometimes the Novi dies instantly, and then the turret switches to you and kills you. You absolutely need body armor for this, or you will die. Because you are probably going to get hit at least once by the turret. So you need body armor and you need health. Here, he has full HP and almost full body armor. Takes a huge chunk of body armor and goes down to 1 HP. Another strat you'll see people do is just standing in front of the laser and then waiting for a Novi to hit them from behind. Basically works the same way. It's total crapshoot though. Like, it's a really, really scary strat that you basically have to do because it saves an insane amount of time. And it's pretty random. Um, if they haven't died, then when you get to this section, they'll do Duffel Bag Ashley. But Duffel Bag Ashley is also random. So sometimes even if you didn't do anything wrong and you set it up correctly, it just won't work. You could tell because Ashley will look like this, like a fucking goof. That means it worked. This is just a walking section. Lewis's key, open the door. And then basically the run is over. Like after this, it's free. 
There are a couple spots where Novis can combo you to death, but like it's insanely rare. They'll probably just kill the Novis. Um, from here, what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell everything in their inventory except for the Killer Seven, buy a rocket launcher, use the rocket launcher to kill the final boss, and then the final phase of the final boss here, it's on a timer. Like when it starts, there's a timer running, and then Ada after the timer's over will give you the special rocket. Then you use the special rocket to kill the boss. But if you have enough magnum ammo and can do enough damage, you can speed it up. You'll see the really high levels runners speeding this up. But the amount of route change that you have to do to do it, like, and you know, you need a good run to have enough ammo to do it, seems unlikely you'd be able to do this in the actual tourney. But it is a thing, it saves time. Then you just ride the jet ski. Jet ski is not free though. Like, if you are nervous, you could definitely chuck the jet ski and run into a wall and die. Holly did that in one of their PBs. Um, there's a save before jet ski, but honestly, I think all the runners in the top eight would be confident enough to not crash the jet ski and just play it safe. And then that's GG, basically. Um, for the verifiers, make sure that during the whole run, they didn't cover the ammo counter, didn't cover the checkpoint thing, maintain the FPS, didn't have FPS in the wrong sections or anything. And yeah, and the IGT lines up. They gotta show this at the end, the IGT at the end. Total play time. And it should line up with this to about one second. Um, final notes. If a runner crashes, they are allowed to restart the timer and fix it so it's at the right time. And load their last save that they made on that playthrough. If they played, so like let's say they make a save at two hours, they play for five minutes, then crash. When they load their save, their timer is going to be at two hours. At the end of the run, the our moderator team will add that five minutes back to the to the time. So we'll have to retime it. There is also a soft lock that can happen at Delago, where it won't let you continue the game, but you can make a save. If a runner makes a save on that soft lock on Delago, and then it's soft locked, they're allowed to Alt F4 their game, restart, reset their timer, and load that save. It's totally fine. Um, that should be basically it, though. That should cover most things. You'll see small, small variances in routes from runner to runner, but that's like basically the route. Some the biggest differences will be TMP or non-TMP, and then like where exactly they get their stuff. The run's super random and volatile, so you know who knows what kind of strats you'll see in the actual run, but that should be the baseline to follow, at least for now. Okay, that was pretty good. Hopefully it's not too long.